When the three of us arrived, Vlain was already waiting, wearing a robe and white beard. He looked rather worried, though it might have been him playing the character. He explained in character that he was a wizard who had heard rumours of a spell-eating monster and that he wanted some adventurers to see if they were true. If they were true, we were supposed to kill it and bring back its head as proof. Not exactly the most exciting scenario, but I wasn't really in the mood to be picky. At least we weren't fighting some demon king in order to save the town or having to save a princess from a castle. Hargill and Lith seemed only vaguely interested in the plot of this quest, and from what I had heard about the other quests they had been on, the plots never really mattered. A typical quest involved walking into one spot where a group of monsters were waiting, killing them, and then being told to go to another spot to fight more monsters. There would occasionally be a special challenge, like fighting the monsters in a limited amount of space or having to solve a riddle found on a piece of parchment, but those were rarity. A plot master has written most of the quests some time ago, which meant that they were often reused. I asked if either Hargill or Lith had searched for a spell-eating monster before, and neither of them seemed to remember going on such an adventure. Considering that this plot wasn't exactly memorable, there was still actually a good chance they had done this adventure already. After Vlain told us where the rumours were, he handed us orange and green striped pieces of cloth, which we were to tie around our heads or arms to signify that we were on a quest. We then headed off, and for a good long while I started to feel like we were just an ordinary adventuring party without a care in the world. We took the main roads, and were spotted a few times by people I could only guess were part of Ulsic's network, as they quickly ran off after seeing us. We ignored them, as we were expected to, since we were hundreds of miles away from them, as far as the game was concerned. Before we arrived at where we were supposed to be, a middle-aged woman who was rather tall and was wearing an ordinary shirt and jeans walked up to us, a radio at her hip and a clipboard in her hand. She introduced herself as the quest master for this quest and told us that the monsters weren't ready yet. While we waited, she read the quest notes on the clipboard to herself, occasionally glancing at us while we sheepishly awaited. She had a slight frown, which would diminish slightly when she looked up at us, but returned when she looked back at the notes. After about five minutes, her radio gave a short beep and she took it to her ear, then told us we could go now. Ahead of us were three people dressed in black robes, shambling around aimlessly with foam clubs. Whatever they were mustn't have been very important, because Lith and I slew them without much trouble, while Hargill stayed towards the back, tossing over a spell every so often. These must have been players on the monster duty shifts, since full-time monsters would have given us a bit more trouble. With the monsters slain, we looted them for a few coins, and then the quest master told us we found a trail that led further into the woods. The three monsters got up and went ahead of us, and when we arrived at where the imaginary trail was supposed to end, they were waiting for us, shambling around again. We killed them more quickly this time, looted them, and then waited as they got up to go further down the imaginary trail which was back the way we had come. Walking back, we met them, killed them, looted them, and then watched them go to the place we had just been. I looked towards the quest master suspiciously, but neither Hargill nor Lith seemed concerned, and I guessed that this was just the way quests were done. I had expected a little less repetition, but I had probably just been over-optimistic. When we had killed our 30th shambling, club-wielding whatever they were, I started to get worried. The same three monsters were getting more and more tired as we continued to fight them, and each battle got easier and easier for us. Lith had taken a few hits, but neither me nor Hargill had taken any damage. With Lith between the monsters and Hargill, while I would flank the ones who tried to attack him, we worked exceptionally efficiently. With Hargill only having to cast the 10 damage fire spell he could cast at will, Hargill asked the quest master what's going on, since quests rarely last longer than an hour or two and it had already been almost two hours. She replied that she was simply following instructions, and I started to wonder if we weren't doing something that needed to be done. Looking at her clipboard, only three sheets had been turned upwards, leaving still several pages of quest notes. While fighting the next batch of monsters, I kept an eye on her, trying to see if I could glean some sort of hint from her expressions. She maintained a slight frown, though she kept glancing at her watch every now and again. When we started, it had barely been seven, while this LARP was considered to run continuously throughout the weekend, it was a little too much to expect many people to be awake at this time. I started to suspect that the reason we had been facing the same three people again and again 
was that there simply had not been that many people awake. However, by 9 o'clock, that was no longer an excuse for us to be continuing this cycle of fight, walk and fight. We were definitely not advancing the plot in any way, and I could tell I wasn't the only one who was getting bored. Finally, while we were fighting our 15th batch of the same three monsters, the Questmaster's radio gave a short beep. She had a short conversation I was unable to overhear thanks to everyone calling out their damage. But when we had efficiently finished off the monsters, she walked over to us, saying we had managed to clear the long trail and find tracks leading to a large cave. We walked to where she directed, and when I saw what was prepared for us, I simply stared, consumed by confusion. Hargill and Lith likewise seemed dumbstruck, and for a brief moment I wondered if we had won some strange kind of prize or were receiving some kind of punishment. The large cave, which in reality was just a clear field with borders that the Questmaster pointed out, was filled with monsters. Most were wearing black robes, though some were wearing red or brown. The Questmaster explained to us that the 30 people we saw were in fact several hundred monsters, and that we should plan accordingly. Oh, this is all sick. Oh yeah, All six wrote this frigging quest. Yeah, Get exactly. you. I didn't need to ask my friends to figure out this wasn't a normal quest. Most quests would just use the same six or seven people as monsters over and over again. And there would never be a huge battle like this one. Especially just for three people. While Hargill had one of the strongest characters in the game, Lith wasn't even above average. And this was only my second event. Which made the thought of us fighting all these monsters a laughable one. Trying to remember the plot, to see if there was any other way to accomplish our mission without fighting everyone, I realised that we didn't have any real motivation to even go into the cave. As far as my character was concerned, he didn't care about all the spell-eating monsters, and he certainly hadn't signed up to fight against a small army of monsters. Though it would be somewhat mean to all these monsters he had assembled just for us, I needed to keep Hargill and Lith alive, and keeping myself alive would be a nice bonus for not going into the cave. My Cardus nicely rationalised. I was just about to explain my safe and cautious plan of running away when Hargill tossed a spell at the closest of the monsters. Forgetting that one of your friends has a habit of making the worst possible decisions at the worst possible times will inevitably be your downfall. Sounds like me and a night out. I hate what does. <laughs> you can take my word on that. Hargill was looking at the monsters with the glee of a child, watching dominoes topple over each other enjoying the effect as one monster pretended to be alerted to our presence, moving towards us with malicious intent. The monster Hargill had hit with a beanbag for 10 damage had fallen from just that, which meant that they were at least weaker than the three we had been fighting before. This was good news, because my two-handed sword only dealt four damage, while Lith's sword only felt five. Even so, I only had 18 hit points, and Lith had been reduced down to something like in his 20s. And the monster Hargill had killed was already running back to the edge of the clearing in order to respawn, representing one of many hundred monsters we had to kill. I am a man that likes plans. For this, I had none. Thankfully the monsters were not following any orders or forming lines. If we could keep them moderately spaced out and not having to face more than two or three at a time, we stood a chance. If we spent too much time fighting one, they would end up being bunched up together which wasn't something the three of us could handle for long. My brain burning inside my skull, trying to come up with some sort of strategy. I watched as Lith started to panic. After shouting at Hargill for being who he was, he turned to me, yelling that we should retreat. Hargill, a look of dawning comprehension, as if he had just noticed two small hordes of people intending to kill us, also seemed intent on simply running away from his clearing. Thankfully that the two of them had managed to discover possibly the only strategy that would leave us alive. I also motioned for us to run. But then I saw her. A group of monsters had been encircling her. But as they had moved forward, I could now see what was at the very rear of the cave. Lying on her back on a table, covered in a brown cloth, was a young woman, dressed in light coloured robes and feigning to be asleep. She seemed familiar, but from the distance I couldn't truly say who it was. It would be too much of a coincidence if it was who I thought it was, but something, perhaps hope, kept me thinking it just might be. I pointed her out to Lith and Hargill, and simultaneously the three of us stopped edging backwards, looks of deep determination grafted to our faces. Sometimes people had asked why I counted these two as my friends, and I will admit that I sometimes wondered that too, but the fact that the three of us, without words, 
knew exactly what needed to be done, even if we were not sure that we could do it, and were moving towards it without thinking of the possibility of failure, was possibly the only reason I had ever need to consider them being my best friends. The monsters stopped their slow advance momentarily, perhaps realising that we no longer intended to retreat. These were the full-time monsters, the people who came to this LARP for no reason other than to fight. They were made of the same material that I was, prideful, solitary and obsessed with challenging ourselves to see what we could do. They knew that a single unified charge would overpower the three of us easily and they hadn't come all the way out there just for a battle that would last under a minute. The first one that came near me leapt, his club swinging wildly. I parried the blow, delivered one in turn, and then striking him again with a rapid whip of the tip of my blade. He seemed amused, smiling as he sat down from his two hits, before standing up and moving towards the back. I lost sight of him as another came speeding towards my side, two clubs swinging. I did not want to get hit. This single thought screamed in my mind, thrashing even the elite group of thoughts known as my common sense. I forgot, perhaps consciously, that I would only be hit by PVC pipes wrapped in foam and rolled to the side, out of my assailant's reach. My move surprised not only him and myself, but the monster who had just rolled next to it. Before he had a chance to react, my sword flashed out and striked to each knee. Two, I counted to myself. Two out of what was an unidentified number that could have been infinite. Lith shouts suddenly slammed into me, and I saw that he had tried pressing forward, resulting him in being surrounded. The monster's odd sense of chivalry kept only two attacking him at once, but he was still in trouble. Spells from Hargel started to rain down. Unlike me, who only carried two pocketfuls of beanbags, Hargel had three sacks of them, and it looked like he was intended to use all of them. He was casting spells with lightning speed, his mouth twitching rapidly as he muttered the incantations before calling out the damage he was dealing. While his haste kept his aim from being perfect, the sheer amount of monsters meant that 9 out of 10 hit their mark. Soon, a wide circle had appeared around Lith, and this circle continued to expand. The monsters had now started to appreciate the power of Hargel, and some of them were no longer simply walking towards the edges of the clearing, but jogging or even running. Harjo seemed to be focusing more on the monsters that were attacking Lith, leaving me to fend for myself. I knew I was making a fool of myself, leaping around and moving without any sense of style or rhythm, but I was starting to feel good. I made sure that every blow that landed counted for two, moving the tip of my sword in the tight circle to get the second hit. While some tried to block, these monsters were few and far between, most caring little if they died since they would respawn almost immediately. After it seemed like we had managed to kill each of the monsters at least once, the tone of the battle shifted. The monsters were no longer just playing around, but actually getting serious, realising that we weren't just three players they could defeat any time they wished. They started to form small groups, taking advantage of openings that appeared as I attacked their allies. I received a hit for four points of damage in the back before I managed to cut my way out of being surrounded and it wasn't until I managed to put a little distance between myself and them that I realised just how much the battle had shifted. Lith's character was stronger than mine, and in some ways his sword and shield were better suited for this kind of fight than my two-handed sword, but he had never fought for so long against so many opponents. He had fallen back towards Hargel, who was digging into his second sack of beanbags already, a look of worry on his face. I worked my way towards them, cutting down the monsters between us, my memory was working hard in the background of my mind and it wasn't until I reached Lith that I realised just how much my body was reacting purely based on the memories of the last event. I had fought most of these people before, though it had been dark and they were dressed differently. I was starting to consciously recognise them from how they fought. Many had distinct styles, portraying that they were more comfortable with other types of weapons, unsurprisingly considering the unwieldiness of their clubs. The clubs didn't seem to move where they wanted to, and my sword must have looked like lightning to them in comparison. Lith almost struck me in surprise when I reached him, but he simply smiled an apology, glad to see me instead of another monster. While it took two blows from either of us to take down a single monster, we were now delivering them in turn, monsters being slain at a pace faster than they could replenish, with Hargel softing each wave before they reached us. Only three or four monsters reached us at a time, allowing me and Lith to kill one or two before Hargel finished the rest. The monsters no longer sat down when slain, 
simply turning around and running to the edge of the clearing before sprinting back. In truth, this was working against them, and they grew more and more tired. Though the three of us had been fighting the entire morning, only Lith seemed to be slowing down from fatigue, both Hargill and I still attacking as fast as ever. As our opponents slowed down, our attacks often hit them before they even had a chance to swing once at us, before being forced to turn around and run back to where they had come from. There was no way to keep count. We had easily slain over a hundred, with Hargill alone having killed no less than fifty. I didn't have time to steal a glance at the Questmaster, to see if her expression could betray the purpose of reasoning behind the battle. Having established an equilibrium of killing and respawning, it was starting to look like a question of endurance. The monsters seemed to understand this, and began attacking and taking breaks and shifts, something we didn't have the luxury of doing. Hargill's incantations started to become mumbles, and Lith's shields were starting to sag. While half, or perhaps more of my brain, was dedicated to nothing but making sure my sword kept striking monsters, the remainder was trying to make sense of the situation. Perhaps we had to fight against these monsters for a certain length of time, like we had in the endlessly recycling battles we had before. This didn't seem right, as I was almost certain that the earlier battles had just been a large stall for time, so that this large crowd of monsters could be assembled for us. But why had they been gathered just for us? I ruled out all six schemes rather quickly. He wouldn't want us to simply die by a herd of monsters, when he could have had the satisfaction of having his cronies kill us, or even to kill us himself. That left the other two plot masters, or perhaps someone I still didn't know about, who had the power to write quests. One of us, or perhaps all three of us, had done something that made someone want us dead. As I almost instinctively parried an attack and delivered two of my own in response, I began to wonder if this was a quest designed to kill us. It was challenging, yes, and I doubt anyone in history of LARP had ever had to face such a skewed odds, but we had not been killed yet. In fact, we had survived for well over an hour, something that no one could have expected. As a group of three monsters attacked me, one managed to lightly hit me in the back of my leg for another point of damage. I realised there was another time a person had fought against even more unreasonable odds. Alone in the woods, I had intercepted an army of monsters intended for the inn, ambushing them again and again until I had slain over 200 in the course of five hours. While the circumstances had been in my favour that time, I wasn't alone in this battle. This battle may have been unreasonable to place against ordinary players, but it almost seemed as if someone was recognising my previous feat and providing another suitable challenge. The three monsters defeated before the next small group arrived. I looked towards Lith, who was faring poorly. He was no longer attacking, allowing his enemy's clubs to slam into his shield while Harjo threw spells at them. I didn't know how much health points he had left, but I knew he wasn't far from dying. Monsters were going around him, striking at Harjo, occasionally landing a hit before a spell finished them. I realised I had moved away from the two of them again, and I moved back to help them, not realising the mistake until I had. The monsters clubbed together more now, a near endless stream of them, and Lith, his heavy shield being drained from his endurance, was breathing heavily as he willed himself to keep blocking. We would not survive as a group, though we had slain more monsters than we'd ever known. It would mean nothing if we died here. We had done nothing to advance ourselves remaining in the tight bottleneck of the entrance to the cave, while the monsters maintained their relentless march. We had to do something, something we should have done long ago, but our naive thought that the monsters were not truly endless, our one hope of victory, had kept us pinned. Accepting that the monsters would never stop coming, I looked upon the only clue of what to do next. Not even bothering to announce what I was going to do to my friends, I bent down low, wondering if my legs still had it in them, Summoning all the energy I had left in me, I sprinted forward, heading towards the woman on the table. I had run past several of the monsters before they realised my intent, but these were the monsters who weren't taking a break. The rest of the monsters, some of them sitting down in the grass in order to catch their breaths, allowed me to sprint up half the field before they moved to surround me. Ignoring the ones that circled around my back, cutting off any chance of returning to Hargill and Lith, I lashed out at the ones between me and the table perhaps harder than I should have. Clubs flew out of people's hands, my own ferocity surprising me, and most of the monsters had enough sense to get out of my way. Ducking under a swing aimed at my shoulders, my forward momentum carried me into a roll, allowing me to rush past my assailant before I leapt back onto my feet. I reached the table, not taking the time to look behind me to see how the situation had changed. 
and was greeted by a most welcoming face. She had been watching me from her lying position, but returned to pretending to be asleep when I reached her, and it was only then that I realised I had no idea what to do. In fact, I didn't even really know why I'd come all this way, other than to see if anything would change. Looking back at the clearing, nearly everyone had turned to look at me, the questmaster staring at me particularly intently. Some of the monsters were edging towards me, looking back at the questmaster as if they were waiting for instructions. Some monsters continued to attack Lith and Hargill, and to my horror, I saw Lith drop to the ground, as four monsters swarmed him. Knowing that Hargill would soon follow, I turned back to the woman, asking for her to wake up. She stirred slightly, and I tried calling out her character's name, Selina. She pretended to wake up slowly, and feigned surprise that she sat up and looked at me. Not in the mood to die for the sake of role-playing out of dramatic reunion, I simply asked if she was alright. Catching the hint of urgency in my voice, she quickly said that we had to escape this cave, and that she would explain everything outside. As she got off the table, the monster seemed to take this as some sort of signal, moving towards the two of us. I looked towards Hargill, who was being spectacularly beaten by a group of monsters with clubs. He killed several before his hit points ran out, dropping to the ground with unnecessary but never less dramatic yell. The monsters, finished with my two friends, now all focused their intention on me. I knew Selena could not run fast as I could, and even I doubted that I could just dodge and weave my way through all the monsters. Realising that my stupid idea of charging all by myself was going to result in all of us simply dying, I prepared myself for the most glorious death I could muster. As I tried to think of some sort of final words to shout out as I died, I felt a reassuring hand place upon my shoulder. This wasn't just a gesture to restore my confidence. Selena's character had originally been created as a pocket mage, a spellcaster that specialised in healing and protective magic that would stay with the warrior, ensuring that the warrior could fight without fear of death. While I disapproved of this kind of team, since it was often used by warriors who had no real skill and would just rely on their pseudo-invincibility, I wasn't in the position or mood to deny that it was an extremely effective strategy. I asked her how many spells she had, and she simply replied that she had enough smiling. The first group of monsters didn't know what had hit them. I simply rushed forward, swinging my sword like a machete, just trying to clear a path towards Lith. I didn't care about defence, not bothering to block, simply so I could hit more often. Each time I would begin to drop to one knee, a hand on my shoulder and a few words brought me back up again to continue the assault. There was an odd look of panic on the monsters' faces, and they were running towards me, all of them trying their hardest to kill me. It seemed like they would be humiliated to have a few people manage to succeed against them. A few tried to circle around me and strike at Selena, but the speed at which we were moving and the confusion that the fallen monsters has caused as they rushed towards the edge of the clearing in order to revive kept us well protected. We reached Lith, and with a single word from Selena, he stood up, revitalised in more ways than one. His shield and sword looked light in his hands as he moved to protect Selena's back. A wide smile on his face. The three of us moved as a perfect unit, with me cutting our way through while Lith guarded us from the monsters who were returning after being respawned. When Selina restored Hargill and he began to fling spells from within our formation, a simple truth became known to everyone within the cave. The four of us could take on an army. We cut through the monsters and out of the clearing, cheering triumphantly at making it out of the cave. We collapsed on the ground laughing at the absurdity of what we had just gone through. The aches and pains of the battle decided to remind me about themselves, but I ignored them, knowing full well that I had just taken part in another legend. Selena, who was easily nowhere near as tired as the rest of us, stood up after a while, retrieving a folded piece of paper from her pocket. She glanced over it, and then explained that she had been looking for a spell-eating monster, but had been captured. However, she knew where it was located, and was willing to serve as our guide. As she finished, the questmaster ran up to us, asking if Selena had explained her part. Selena replied that she just needed to give us our restorative potions, and then we would be ready to go. Lys simply muttered that if they took a 15 minute break, the spell-eating monster wasn't going to be going anywhere. Hargill and I agreed, and the questmaster said that we should take a half hour break, so that the monsters could prepare for the next encounter. As she left, we took a restorative potions, simple slips of paper with the name of the potion on them and ripped the slips in half, restoring ourselves to full HP. 
While we waited, I asked Selena why I hadn't seen her at the opening ceremony. She first said that she was glad that I had been looking for her, and then quickly explained that the reason she had been late was because she had been held up by her ex-boyfriend in the parking lot. He had started an argument with her about how even though they had broke up in reality, they were still supposed to be a couple inside the game. Suck my Fucking dick. Fucking loser. Fuck that. That's gay as anything. <laughs> That's a really gay. I laughed, misreading Selena's tone, and she exasperately said that it wasn't funny at all. She paused for a moment, perhaps realising that it was actually pretty ridiculous, and I could see that she was fighting a smile. I changed the subject. Asking what she had been doing lying on the table in the middle of a cave filled with monsters. She replied that Flane had gone up to her dressed as a wizard while the three of us had been fighting the repeating trio of monsters and explained that the quest needed someone who could cast healing spells. Selena had always been an honorary member of House Cerberus, just like myself, and Flane had thought that she would be the perfect person for the job. She then started to explain how it was rather funny and then that the quest was written with the expectation that the three of us would simply rush over to her, wake her up, and escape within a matter of minutes. No one had expected that the three of us would try and kill hundreds of monsters, and even fewer would have expected us to have been rather successful on that point. Had the monsters not had infinite lives, but only three or four, we would have managed to shock everyone by succeeding within an hour. Harjo's chest swelled, taking the chance to remind us that he was responsible for most of the kills. Lith interjected by reminding him that without anyone protecting him, he would have fallen within 30 seconds. The four of us chatted pleasantly until the quest master returned, her clipboard under her arm. She seemed rather happy, though she didn't offer us any new information, other than that everything was ready for us to proceed on our quest. So boys, kept you waiting a wee bit, I. Well, I have to say, I love Gorp Camp. I think it's one of the best stories I've done in a long time. There's so much of it, so don't worry. I'm probably going to be making about a video a week, so well. And it will probably be going on for some time. So, like, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely subscribe. As I say, we're only on the second day, so we are. Uh, and it's not even lunchtime yet. We've still got the rest of the this day, and then all of the Sunday. And then we've also got another thread to go back again. So, like, that's all going to come with time. It'll come soon enough. But, like, you know, like as always, remember to subscribe. Tell us what you thought down below. And I am so happy they got a pocket mage. It's actually ridiculous. I am so fucking happy that they've actually got a healer now. It's, it's so good. I think it's cool as anything. But, look, uh, I don't want to start gushing. You tell me what you think down below. I really look forward to seeing it, and I'll see you in the next video.